Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you could find a spot, if you can find a spot where the future is available, uh, welcome this afternoon to the Blue Innovation Doc. Uh, we are really proud to have with us one of the, the main partners and one of the main sponsors of this fantastic event, uh, San Lorenzo Yachts. And I'm very delighted to, in a second, hand over the floor for this press conference of San Lorenzo. Uh, the press conference has the title On Track Straight to 2030. And I'm very delighted to introduce our first speaker, um, no one less than Massimo Perotti, the chairman and CEO of San Lorenzo Yachts. Thank you, Mr. Perotti. Over Thank to you. you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you and welcome to the floor. It is uh, the 40th anniversary of my work in the yachting. So everybody think that today is very easy for me to talk to you. It's wrong opposite is the most difficult time because I have to talk about very difficult technical matter which is not really familiar to me so I ask you to beg your pardon if I made some mistake fortunately I have Paolo and Luca here to help me and uh, let's start the reason of today to be here is uh, to give a follow-up of what we did in September in Cannes. You remember we tried to give you a feeling of the next 10 years, but things go very quickly and more and more people around the world uh, needs to understand how yachting is reacting to the world situation. So we have been uh, receiving that push month after month and we are glad to come here at the middle of January after only four months and to inform you of the next step, what we did, what kind of problem we are facing in order to give the, the feeling to, to the market of uh, the San Lorenzo um, investment in uh, in, uh, let's call it, generally sustainability. So let's go and see. We're going to, to explain our uh, decision regarding uh, the next 10 years view, what will be, what is the today GHG uh, emission matter, today's sustainability path, the fuel cell system, Paolo, which is the Vice President of Research and Development, will come and help me to explain more in detail. And then we move uh, to the uh, Blue Game uh, tender of American Cup, and then Luca will come and help me about that. And at the end, uh, the Blue Game Multi-Hull 65 hybrid hydrogen, that is our final goal for 2025. As you know, the first 10 years of our uh, experience was concentrated to design, art, innovation and tradition, but next 10 years, our goal will be sustainability with technology, service and supply chain. Today, we will concentrate on sustainability. The first important point, from September in Cannes to today, four months, HIMO, the institution, world institution, decided that uh, originally the goal for zero emission was 2,100, plenty of time, 80 years ahead. And then, uh, in the middle of December, they decided that was too far away, and they moved the goal to 2050, cutting 50 years of timing to get to the point of having zero emission. You see, the blue line was without anything, the green line was the original plant. 
the red line is the new plant timing that has been uh, announced on the middle of December. You get the feeling that something is moving quickly towards uh, a technology which is very difficult, but is the only way for the human being to survive. So, 50 years to the final goal doesn't mean that we have uh, 30 years in front of us, because in the meantime, we have to cut to 50% instead of 2050, which was originally the plant. Now, this plant has been moved between 2030 and 2040. So we have two goals, which is to cut 50% of the emission within 2035-37, and to go to zero within 2050. That is the message which is coming to us in December 22 and is pushing San Lorenzo to move quickly. And I think and I hope that all our competitors are doing the same because we cannot be the only one to solve the matter. It has to be a general approach. Overall, if you see the matter, this is a plant where shipping has a total GHG emission of 240,000 tons, of which yachting, only yachting, is uh, weighting 553, which is 0.22%. It's nothing. But as you probably recall, a few months ago, there was a, a quite a big action from uh, French people against the private jet user. Now, private jet using in respect of the commercial jet is more or less 0.22%. But nobody is going to stop a commercial plan leaving from Etro to New York. But the private jet is something that nobody likes. So even if we have only 0.22% of the problem, we are still yachting, and we have more responsibility than the shipping people because, uh, what I can say, we are building toys for men and women. So this picture is showing you that uh, yachting is here almost nothing, but it's still very important. As you know, we have a signed agreement with the most important player in the market. The first agreement was Siemens in August 21, and then uh, MTU Rolls Royce in August 22, and then uh, AODEV and Volvo. And we're very proud of that, and we thank you very much. I can see some people from Volvo, the MTU people, the people from Siemens. Thank you for your support. Without it, we could not do anything. What is happening in the market, which is supporting our idea? I could read on the paper in the last weeks that uh, some of our competitors is against methanol. They consider fuel cell not the solution. There is a lot of debate, but there is only one way to go. And we can prove you that uh, who knows more than us, which is Merck. Merck is the second largest shipper in the world. They are responsible of 26.5% of the GHG emission, much more than 0.22. And uh, here we have a picture where the Hyundai heavy industry is cutting the first piece of metal to build the first large ship with dual fuel. So Mask 
already started to go to the methanol solution for the future. Another important uh, uh, sign that uh, our direction is the right path is uh, this plant, which is built in uh, Patagonia from uh, Siemens. And uh, there, Siemens is building green methanol and e-fuel for Porsche. So this is another sign that our direction is the right direction. Now, what, uh, what is the fuel cell system and where we are? Well, I, I think uh, the best way, the easiest way for you was to produce a movie for one minute to show you the situation of San Lorenzo today related to the 50 meter we are going to launch on April 24 with the fuel system and reformer of methanol on board. Let's see. Light is life. Light is energy. Man has been searching for his light since the beginning. Always respecting what surrounds him. We listen in order to understand and we act as trailblazers. With concreteness and visionary innovation. In an unexpected space, the bow. Our light is called Fuel Cells System. It is a carbon neutral power generation system dedicated to the hotellery and designed by San Lorenzo and Siemens Energy. We use green methanol to generate clean electricity. A mix of methanol and water is transformed into hydrogen to produce up to 100 kilowatts of carbon neutral energy. Soon, we will be able to show you our new light. An innovative, safe, barrier-free system. Get ready for a new dawn. We will be the first to bring it in 2024. We will go further. The boat is in construction. The hull will arrive in the shipyard, in the fitting out shipyard in February. And Wednesday morning, we will fly to Siemens to see the panel in real. The system is working, is in the testing room of Siemens. Then Paolo and uh, a group of engineers of San Lorenzo has to move that system on board of the boat. With the help of Lloyd's Register, they work with us. On one table, we are designing the fuel cell system for the hotellery. And on the other table, aside of us, they are writing the rules, because there is no rules yet. Uh, it is a great experience. And really, we, we hope that will be the, the right way to solve the problem for the future. You can see from here, the first part is uh, the methanol tank with the water. The mix of 60% uh, of methanol and 40% of water will be a melting which goes to the module of uh, uh, the module are 20 modules building 5 kilowatt each of them. And uh, the technology, which has been a, a big step forward in respect of September, that we do not have the reformer 
producing the, metan, uh, the hydrogen and then the hydrogen goes to the fuel cell. But this little module is getting the methanol and inside of the module they transform the methanol to hydrogen and with the air they produce five kilowatts for each module. 20 modules together is 100 kilowatts. 100 kilowatts of energy produced with methanol reformed to hydrogen and uh, oxygen. And the residual is H2O, water, which goes to the sea. With 100 kilowatt continuously built, produced, we recharge the battery and then from the 650 kilowatt of uh, power coming from the battery, we can supply the energy to the boat for the artillery. And this is the system that we are going to test and see the day after tomorrow in Siemens. Now, I just want to stop for a second regarding artillery, because there are some competitors who are complaining that we are not solving anything. Well, first of all, in technology, you have to do one step at a time. You cannot jump. So we are testing something that doesn't exist. But secondly, these are the numbers that we get from the institution. The yachts, the super yachts, are used at birth for 57% of the time and at anchor for 33% of the time. So the total of 90% of the use of a super yacht is without the underway, which is only 10%. So San Lorenzo will have a 50 meter in the water by spring, summer 24, solving 90% of the problem, which is the real use of the yacht. Furthermore, and now I have to ask Paolo to come and, and explain to you, for 2027, with the big help from MTU, we will have uh, the 100% carbon neutral yachts on the sea. Thank you. Paolo. Hello, everybody. We are really excited. We have started uh, a journey that is really exciting. What Max has showed is the first step. Step after step, uh, we will go to the final result that is really a zero emission or a carbon neutral yacht. But let's see what is next. So first of all, a 100% carbon neutral super yacht means uh, we have to consider not only the hotel load, we have to consider the full power that is needed to get the speed, to get the range. So for sure, we will not have only fuel cells. For sure, we will need engines, engines that are running with methanol. And we have uh, good uh, partners that are working on that. That is an important point. And then, if we have the power of the engine with methanol, we still have to consider the fuel cell, but with the fuel cell, we will have to progress. So today, we are what they, we call step one. So what will be on the boat in 2024? But we have to consider that uh, the technology is going on. And to reach step two, we will need more power, because uh, step one is just hotel. Step two will be hotel plus hybrid. And we have not a lot of space on board. So that means that in terms of power density, the product that is good today for the hotel load will have to be developed in order to generate more power in the same space. 
And again, we have good partners. We have, uh, obviously, Siemens Energy, that is our main partner, and they have uh, good partners as well that are going there. And then another point will be service life. We need uh, a solution that has uh, enough service life uh, in order to have a long life of the system. So we are progressing in these two directions, but then there is the step three. Step three will be hotel plus main propulsion, where main propulsion will be a mix of fuel cells and uh, engines that are running with methanol. And again, in this case, the fuel cell will have to progress even further. So, uh, we have not to sleep uh, comfortable where we are today or where we will be 2024. We have still to push a lot. We have still to work a lot with our partners because we need uh, to go there. And then another point is not just a question of uh, fuel cells or engines. Then you need uh, a tank where you need to accommodate the methanol. And here is another big issue, another area where we have to work really hard. Why? Very simple. Today we have uh, design rules that are coming uh, from the registers. And these design rules are saying uh, if you have methanol around uh, the tank, uh, you need uh, additional space, is what we need, is what we call cofferdam. So just to give you an example, in blue here, you see what is today the shape of a fuel tank for the diesel engine, diesel fuel. Here, in yellow and in blue, you see what we could do if we just keep uh, the solution like it is today in terms of rules. So basically, let's see here. This profile here is the profile of the tank like it is today. Then, if the rules are saying you need a coffer dam that is 60 centimeters depth, then you see what is remaining in blue for the methanol. Obviously, it's not enough. So the point is we have to work in terms of technology, we have to work in terms of regulation, we have to work with the registers in order to create space with a smart way of uh, developing the fuel tanks, preserving the safety, but uh, trying to optimize the tank for a yacht. We will go there. It's not uh, simple, but working uh, really hard with the registers and with the, our partner, we will go there. And then another point that we would like to stress. You know, Mr. Perotti showed what IMO has in mind. So, a sharp decrease of the emissions. Then, IMO is talking about uh, what to do on big yachts and what to do on big ships. That's fine. With the rules that they have uh, today and with the, uh, let's say, the specification that uh, we have uh, on our desk, going below 50 meter with a full methanol ship will be I'm not saying impossible, but uh, very, very difficult. So what we have to do, if we like to bring even there, so where there is a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, there is a huge number of uh, yachts, we have to work together with IMO saying, uh, look, we are really happy, we are really pushing to go in this direction, but please consider that uh, it will be much easier, much more effective if when we switch to methanol or to, let's say, better solution from the environmental point of view, in the calculation of the gross tonnage, 
you can deduct what is the volume that is needed for the additional fuel. So that is, a, in our way, is a fair proposal because we are saying we are pushing in order to go even further compared to what you are asking because you are asking that even for big, big, big boat and yacht. We can do that even on smaller sizes, but uh, please uh, deduct that space, just that space, uh, from the calculation of the GT. That is an important point. So we will work uh, together with Seabus, uh, together, I hope, uh, with uh, our competitors that are in the same boat, let me say, <laughs> in order to convince IMO to go in this direction, because it will be really beneficial for the environment. So let's say we are really excited. Sometimes we are tired. Sometimes we are uh, happy. Sometimes we are uh, puzzled. But uh, it's a long way that uh, we are strongly convinced we can run and we can reach the result, as uh, Max was saying, not in 20 years or in 30 years. If we are really supported by partners, if we work hard, I think that we can do that even quicker than what today is needed and is asked for. Thank you, Paolo. <laughs> ah, by the way, just one point. I've not been so specific uh, in technicalities, but uh, at the end... Don't be more specific. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> At the end, when we have uh, questions and answers, we have here the partners of Siemens Energy, so they can uh, answer more into detail if you have some specific question on that. Thank you. So the final goal is to put the boat in the water by spring 24, test it during the summer and have uh, the 50 meter with the first uh, reformer fuel cell system functioning for the Monaco show of 2024. At Monaco, September 2023, we will be able to have uh, the following the next press conference and keep you informed on the progress. Now, I ask Luca, Luca Santella, to come to help me. You know that the road to 2030 is split in two, super yacht and uh, yacht. Now, Luca is helping me to uh, give you the update situation of the production of the tender to the Americans Cup. Uh, the tender to Americans Cup is probably the most technological game, water game for the next 24 months. We are going to have this experience, this dream, in order to collect the technology to build by 2025 the first real yacht, which will be a 20 meter, a blue game multi-hull 65, which will be hybrid and hydrogen, HH. That would be at the end of the description of Luca. Luca, the floor is yours. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we will we'll start with a fantastic video showing you uh, our HSV. Creare una squadra, rischiare, farsi guidare più dalle emozioni, essere all'avanguardia. Professionisti affermati e spinti da una passione impressionante. Sì, una barca, ma vuole. Una concept boat, andremo a 50 nodi volando. Nel silenzio, un risultato incredibile, sarà la barca tecnologicamente più avanzata che navigherà nel mondo. DGHSV, Hydrogen Support Vessel, 
sarà la prima barca non a vela che navigherà totalmente senza emissioni. Quasi 200 miglia di autonomia, foil, a fuel cell a idrogeno, motore elettrico, batterie, composite box, power train a idrogeno, software di controllo del volo. HSV è legato a quanto crediamo nel futuro del multiscafo, alla filosofia sia di San Lorenzo che di Brugheim. È veramente una rivoluzione nel mondo del pleasure yacht. Questa barca navigherà con gli American Magic, il New York Yacht Club, nell'ambito della Coppa America. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so after this beautiful video, and during this beautiful video, you could see very quickly the great team we have put together to face uh, this incredible project. Uh, the outside of the boat, uh, the interior of the boat, just some details of the foils, and also s the beginning of the process of uh, the building. Now we will go together uh, through everything in more in detail. So here, just by opening the side of, uh, of the HSV, you will see how complex it has been to fit inside all the different uh, systems we needed uh, you know, to, to sail uh, the boat. Starting from the front with uh, the full cell, the electric motor, which is hidden underneath the panel. Uh, the gray box uh, are, is the battery. The red box is uh, uh, the, electrical, uh, the main electrical cabinet, a free technical uh, area, and uh, the big bottles for uh, the hydrogen. Consider that everything is symmetric on the port side. Now we are looking only to the starboard side. So let's have a look what is inside the HSV. There is a nice big console, carbon console, uh, with um, screens to manage uh, power, to manage the flight, uh, and to manage, manage obviously, navigation. Uh, the boat can carry up to seven uh, uh, passengers. And you see a 3D human uh, uh, figure there is uh, a, a demand we had uh, from American Magic. We needed to fit uh, also a toilet inside this boat. And uh, in the tradition of uh, San Lorenzo and Blue Game customization style, we made it. It was very hard, but we made it. Here is uh, the construction process, uh, 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 the, in particular of the mold. Uh, starting from the milling of the polyurethane in uh, picture number one. In the second image, you see the finished plug folded with Teflon. And then in picture number three is uh, the layup of 100% uh, uh, recycled carbon. So the mold, all the molds of the boat will be made in recycled carbon. After that process, there is uh, infusion. And the last picture is uh, the mold uh, uh, finished. Here, a quick look at the second step, the building of the hull. On the left, you see uh, uh, the finished uh, mold, which has been post-cured for about 15 hours at uh, 90 degrees. And on the right picture, you see the beginning of the layup of uh, the prepreg carbon. So once the prepreg is completely lay, uh, laid up, uh, the, boat, the um, hull will be bagged, vacuumed, and then goes through a process of, again, 15 hours of uh, cycle to get up to 90 degrees uh, uh, temperature to get the best out of the carbon fiber. The protocol of the cup was very, very demanding in uh, terms of uh, performance, speed, uh, the, the 50 knots target, 24 knots taking off. 
So we had to really work hard in uh, the hydrodyn hydrodynamics of, uh, of the HSV, combined with very, very big attention to the weight of the boat. So everything going on, on top of the boat, starting from the composite we just saw, had to be very light and super controlled. Here is a uh, preliminary appendages design and uh, CFD performance prediction done by our consultant is uh, Caponeto Huber, and in particular is uh, a shot taken at 50 knots uh, with just a little trim, less than one degree, and uh, flight height from the water 70 centimeters. The challenge was not only, only for the hydrodynamic uh, problem. Also, the mechanical problem was very important uh, because everything which had to be fitted in the strut had to face and uh, not go against uh, the hydrodynamics. So this guy has to really strive hard to, to match uh, uh, what we needed. Here you have an overview of how it works, uh, the, the foil system, how it works. You see there is a, a main strut, an horizontal main uh, foil with uh, the flap. You see the foil is uh, in dark gray and the flap is orange. A bulb or torpedo and the two side winglets. On top of the strut, there is, a, a, we call it tenon, which is the part that goes inside the, the hull, and the radial electric uh, motor. Here a detail of uh, strut and uh, torpedo. I must say, probably, this has been the most difficult task for our engineers. As you can see here, we had to fit the shaft of the electrical motor the rod moving the flaps, the water that has to go through the strut going up for cooling everything on board, because everything, almost everything is water-cooled, engine, batteries, and stuff like that. All of these so is, were problems of strength, dimensioning, and weight, each one against the other. Nothing was uh, helping th the rest. So we had to find different solutions, and also the materials we chose were based on this problem. Uh, the strut, the gray, light gray vertical part, is in titanium. The aft part of the strut, the gray, is in carbon. The horizontal foil is in titanium. The flaps are in stainless steel like uh, the torpedo and like the winglet. So it was a combination of, uh, of uh, materials to match all these uh, uh, particular needs. The top of uh, the strut, as I was saying, there is a tenon. The tenon must fit perfectly inside the pocket we build in uh, the hull of uh, the HSV. It's how the system is linked to the composite structure. You see also in, in between of the tenon an hydraulic ram. This is the one moving the flap down there in the, in the, in the foil. On top of it, again, the radial uh, <coughs> motor. The other two pictures show the rudder or elevator. Why elevator? Uh, this uh, the elevator, we work like an airplane. Airplane has got a uh, rudder and the two wings on the tail. This system is exactly the same, with the difference that the two wings are monolithic with the rudder. This means that the top of uh, the mechanism is much more complex because uh, the rudder has to turn around its axis, but it's also to pivot on the longitudinal axis in order to let the boat uh, fly even. So we have been many times through the high performances uh, of this boat, speed, takeoff, everything. But how this boat, how does she fly? 
how can she fly? Uh, first of all, the flight of the boat is 100% software controlled. There is the pilot only moves the direction, navigation, and decides the height from the water. Flat water, we can sail very low for a better performance. Rough waters, we have to sail as high as we can. And the system works with an ultrasound sensor, which is put in between the two bows. The sensor gives information to the system, which makes the actuators reacting on uh, the flap that we were watching before and the elevator to keep the to let the boat get out of the water or fly even or uh, get back in in the water so for what concern hsv i think this is uh, a the, the complete overview obviously afterwards you guys can uh, ask and uh, we can get in more uh, details the boat will be in the water either July or September for the first test, and we have one full year to do the tune-up until uh, the American Cup will start, which is previewed by September 24. The experience we are getting to do this with the 10 out of the most important uh, uh, sh scientists will be used to apply the experience to build the first 20 meter with uh, the fuel cell uh, propulsion, which is the BGM 65HH. Yes, to confirm how much uh, Blue Game and the group believes uh, in uh, the multi-hull, uh, after BGM 75, which we will present uh, uh, in Cannes this year, after the H HSV, we have just seen, uh, 2026, we will uh, be presenting uh, BGM HH. Why HH? H as hybrid, we will be the first one having from Volvo Penta, thank you, Volvo, the new hybrid IPS system combined with the other H, the hybrid uh, uh, solution, the hydrogen solution for the electric, electrical generation. As uh, Mr. Perotti was saying, we are getting a lot of experience and uh, know-how from uh, the HSV project. So we will have on board the same EODEV fuel cells, 280 kilowatt fuel cells, combined with uh, the four hydrogen bottles and the battery pack. This combined with the two IPS uh, hybrid system will make for the first time a real sailing 100% uh, sustainable. From uh, the fitting out point of view, we have not big problems in fitting uh, the different system. Uh, as you can see from the top slide, the bottles, the hydrogen bottles, will uh, take place in the tender garage. The two fuel cells on top of the engines in the engine room. Aesthetically, the boat will not have any difference from a standard uh, thermic uh, uh, solution. But let's see what makes the system fantastic. A real new step in uh, our business, something real innovative. Let's look at the speed of eight or 10 knots. We are talking about 80 nautical miles or 40 nautical miles. It means I get out of the harbor in La Spezia and I go to Corsica. This makes a difference. We are not talking about getting out of a harbor or sail in a natural park. We are talking about sailing, sailing emission free. And I think this is a, a real revolution in our uh, business. Thank, Thank you, you, Luca.
the beauty of the system is completed by the fact that during navigation, I just push the throttle a little more, and automatically, with the, the Volvo IPS system, the boat will sail normal thermic with the diesel engine. So it's a real close uh, cycle. Yes, it's a real hybrid boat. You can go carbon-free, or you can go faster and longer with uh, simply putting the throttle down. Now, <coughs> that was the question we raised in, uh, in September. I leave you on that. The road to 2030 is a race we must win. So today we must say we are right on track. Thank you. It's not easy, believe me. Now is your time. Any question? Of course, I don't know if I will be able to reply to you, but Paolo and Luca will help me. Do we have a... The gelato is there. Sorry, I'm a um, sailor. I sail, oh, my boat is a sailing boat. But I must say that what you have done and what you are going to achieve is fantastic. Thank you. Because sailors have to stick together on the, on the ocean. I have one question. I understand that you, your group has a phenomenal um, drive for innovation. There's another area of innovation about which the boats that you manufacture will absolutely need a solution. It is the mooring problem mooring. when the boats are sailing. I'm not talking about the mooring in the marina, of course. I'm talking about how does such a beautiful boat as any of the ones that are there how is that boat going not to destroy the bottom of the sea when it's in Paros, for example? You see what I mean? And therefore, I would like to keep in touch with you because I believe I have invented the solution. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing my own marketing. Thank you very much. Bravo. Somebody should take the business card of the guy. Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope to be here next year. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're a great company. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are uh, really happy about this because, as you know, in France and now in Spain, they forbid the boat above 24 meters to drop the anchor in the coast. We really don't understand how few boats above 24 meters can damage the ground of the sea more than thousands of small boats in France. But probably there is another reply to this point. Next time we will explain. Okay, next question. Can I give you just a... Uh... Sure. A quick answer. So, for sure, we will be very much interested to see what you have in mind. So far, we have a solution that is, let's say, an intermediate solution that is with hybrid and with the, let's say, static positioning. We can avoid to drop the anchor. We can stay in place using the energy from batteries or fuel cells. That is a solution that Volvo has already, but we can do that basically even with uh, other engines. Thank you. Yes, it is a possibility, but it is impossible to um, use such a possibility. Technically, I know it, because how do you do it when 
you have people who want to enjoy your boat and they want to swim around your boat. How do you do it sure. when you have other boats anchored next to yours, etc.? Et this is I, the reason why we are very happy I, to yeah. hear about I'm, your idea. My father, my father was a captain of such a boat, so that's why I know a little bit of it. You know? Good. So, as I said before, we have, to, we have together to find a solution that will fit all types of boats, any kind of propulsion, everywhere in the world. In the Med, because it's not only in France and Spain that is forbidden. It's a European law that we are talking about. And it's coming step by step to Italy, to Greece, to everywhere. And it's also going to be um, <coughs> implemented in all the areas in the world, which are the most beautiful ones. I mean, the ones with coral. We kindly ask you a favor. Yes. To sit and wait for me when I finish. Oh, hey, yeah. To resign an exclusivity for the next three <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May I come back? I have a meeting at four. <laughs> I'll be back. Thank you. Prego. I have, I have a question for uh, Luca Santella. Uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, below 50 meters is a real problem now to create something really uh, at the moment. So, uh, those kind of solutions on a multi hull uh, it could be the first solution to approach uh, the green propulsion uh, on the small size of boat. And the second question is uh, how much you learn from the America's Cup experience uh, and how it's been important to transfer this experience uh, to develop something new for this kind of uh, boat? Uh, as I anticipated it before, uh, we are really learning a lot, 360 degrees not only from uh, the uh, fuel cell and hydrogen uh, stuff, but uh, uh, any detail in the boat is something really that we have to customize to uh, start from scratch. So it's a, a really tough exercise for all of us. So we will not only blue game, but I think the whole group will get uh, a lot of benefit from this experience. Uh, for what concern uh, uh, first question, I would say that uh, at the moment, uh, with the technology at the level we have, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Perotti and Paolo were saying, we will go step by step. For the moment, I think the project of uh, BGM 65 HH is uh, really something as much further as we can go. So for the moment, I would say this is uh, where we can, uh, we can get. But we are waiting, obviously, for all the technical updates. Dear Mr. Perotti, thank you from the side of marinas uh, for thinking uh, of such uh, smart solutions. In fact, it's a range of solutions because uh, you have been working on methanol and on hydrogen, which is uh, the real goal uh, at the end of the day. Uh, but, but coming back to methanol, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, when, uh, thank God, methanol can be converted into hydrogen uh, through the fuel cell, is there um, a small uh, loss of power in comparison with uh, converting directly hydrogen into uh, electricity? Yeah. So, uh, obviously, the longer is the chain, uh, the lower will be the, let's say, the, the efficiency. But the point is that uh, we can use, uh, and we will be the first one to use that, uh, high temperature system of uh, fuel cells. So with that, uh, if we compare the efficiency with an engine, let's say a standard engine, with that, uh, we will be Much. higher. Not much, it's not a double. I'm not here to sell dreams, but it will be consistently higher. So we can, in some way, compensate the longer chain using a system that is giving a higher level of efficiency.
Hi, uh, Francesca from Superyacht Times. Just, uh, there's been a lot of conversations about methanol, hydrogen, and also the issues revolving around bunkering when it comes to actually getting this onto the yachts in the first place. Is San Lorenzo also in discussion with places like marinas of how to refuel these boats when they are powered by methanol in the first place? So for the methanol, I think that uh, as it has been done by Maersk for big port, we probably together with other yards, because in our view, the concept is we should bring on the market solutions that are common. It's not just San Lorenzo. We will have to discuss with marinas. But what I can say is that uh, methanol is in some way easier, because we don't need the methanol under pressure. And methanol can be contained in tanks that are more or less the tanks uh, that in the marina you have for the normal diesel or for the gas gasoline. So from that point of view, I don't see technical problems. Basically, we have to progress. The higher will be the number, the higher will be the marinas that can give that. But in the meantime, you can bring methanol with, uh, let's say, a small uh, is, truck is, 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 is not the correct terms. Anyway, with uh, a a tank on a van where you can have two, three, four, ten cubic meters that can cover the in-between situation, but long term we will have a refueling point in the marinas as we have today with the normal gasoline or uh, the normal diesel fuel. Consider that uh, Merx in November 22 already agreed nine deal for renewable methanol supply. They are building many ships with methanol engines. MTU is uh, building engines with methanol. So all this is much more important than the yacht industry. So we think that uh, the industry will move towards uh, methanols, and so we will have the methanols in the main marina. Of course, maybe we have to do uh, uh, 20 miles to get to the right port, but consider that when we do the bunkering of a 50, 60, 70 meter, you do 50, 60, 70 tons of fuel of methanol, so that will stay for uh, uh, weeks and weeks. Uh, regarding the bottle of uh, hydrogen, again, uh, there are the most important uh, truck builder, Volvo, MAN, Scania, Iveco, they are all having now new project of trucks in, uh, with a fuel cell system. So the tank of hydrogen will be something that you can find in any place, and that also will, will help. Uh, it's a process. I think that uh, more than one century ago, when uh, everybody was going on a horse, and there was the first cars going around. Everybody was asking who will distribute the fuel for these cars. But then you see there is no more horse going <laughs> and there is a lot of cars. It's a transformation that we must have. So we count, not alone, of course, but we count that the whole industry will move towards that direction. This big company is a good sign because they are really going 365 days per year everywhere. So we are confident. Uh, Darko from yours, Croatia. Just a short question for Mr. Perotti, probably. Uh, looking at the prices of this system, I believe the research and development must cost a lot of money. And for the end customer, the yacht owner, what do you expect? How much in percentage? Can you can you see? We don't know yet. Uh, also, because we did not discuss with Volvo and MTU the price of the new system. But for the cost of developing, we are uh, in a good shape because we have a lot of help from Europe, from the UAE. Uh, we think that uh, in the future uh, the institution will uh, make the people who is producing carbon to pay something 
and give this money to the people who is uh, trying to reduce the, the problem to the air, to the, to the environment. So we don't know yet how much will be the cost of a liter of, of green methanol. Uh, we don't know yet what will be the cost of the couple of NTU running at methanol uh, or the Volvo hybrid system or the Siemens fuel, si uh, fuel cell system, but because they are developing as well. But we think that uh, uh, the reaction of the society will be so positive that uh, the politician will help us will help uh, the builder to produce the most sustainable product. So it is something that we cannot think, we cannot solve. We are not selling this boat to the market. The first 50 meter is built for me. And the first uh, uh, BGM 70, 65 will be built for a friend because we cannot take the risk. We are confident that that will not be a problem. Maybe there will be an extra cost for the customer, but uh, we think talking with our market, with our customer, they are all excited to go to that direction, to a point that some of our customers are already asking to change the boat to buy the new one. So I think that probably the business will be helped by changing the old one for the new, because nobody likes to, you know, to have a, a dirty <laughs> fuel on the air. So I think that will not be a problem, not be an issue. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Holly, uh, Boat International. Um, San Lorenzo, Larson, and FedChip are all working towards the same goal. You're obviously investing heavily in R&D, but is there a point in the future where you can share your learnings and information to try and accelerate the growth and the movement towards being emission-free? We are doing already with uh, Larson and FedChip. We talk each other. They are building, as you know, a nine, Fed ship, Fed ship is building a 95 or 96 meter, is a giga yacht for 2025. And the Lursing is building a 130 meter giga yacht for 26. So we talk each other. We are part of a, a group, which I forgot the name. Green Maritime Methanol. The Green Maritime Methanol Group, which is uh, uh, part of it. There is MTU, there is... Uh, Lloyd Register, American Bureau of Shipping, there are builders, there are suppliers, and all together we try to move, to move forward, for sure. Nobody is asking to the NTU people when the first couple of engines will be ready for... Uh, <laughs> you're very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> 20? 26. 26, perfect. So our planning of early 27 works. Good. <laughs> we have the Volvo friends over there, but we know that they cannot talk. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> there are only the two Italians, so... <laughs> Antonio, che ne dici? Tu che sei un uh, sale guy. I like it very much, but I want to ask to Luca, which are the main differences between your foreign boat and Emirates Team New Zealand, which is just sailing now. If you uh, know that, because I know. No, no. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, technically, the two boats are very similar in terms of length, beam, the foil system is similar with the main uh, central foil and uh, the aft elevator. Uh, further, um, more, the fuel cell, same fuel cell, it's Toyota, so we have the same heart 
Uh, they have smaller batteries. Uh, we know that. We couldn't find smaller batteries on the market. But the, re the bottles are exactly the same. So I would say the big difference is the aesthetic. Our boat is much nicer. Okay then, thank you very much to be here and I think next is uh, probably September at Cannes or maybe earlier in Monaco. We, we have to see either one or the other. We are uh, dealing with them to the two marina who will be the first and uh, by that time we will come with the next step to show you that things is moving and is going. Thank, thank you. you.